This video covers chapter four questions on page 97. I'm starting off with problem eight and I'll also do problem nine in this video. Okay, problem eight says, uh, suppose the oil, uh, oil is currently trading at $38 a barrel. That's, that's the spot price. Assume that the interest rate is 3% for all maturities. So that's the interest rate R. Uh, and oil has a convenience yield. C, unspecified, just C. Remember what a convenience yield is. Um, a convenience yield is uh, especially prevalent in the oil market. It's it's the added benefit you uh, a producer gets from holding an inventory of oil when oil prices are gyrating significantly, and when there may be distribution bottlenecks. Okay, that's so it's a convenient yield. It's in a percent form. <clears throat> Okay, if there are no other carrying costs, for what values of C can the oil market be in backwardation? Well, let's talk about what backwardation is, uh, re refresh our memories as to that and then uh, what it means, and then we'll answer the problem. Basically, I showed you a graph that looks like this um, a while back, a couple classes ago. And um, what I said was, when you're looking at this point in time, so where I have, what I have is, by the way, I have a, the spot price, and I'm assuming the spot price, whatever it is, does not change. So it may be, you know, five dollars a bushel for the price of corn, and the expiration may be several months out. And so I'm assuming the spot is remaining unchanged, and and it equals the expected spot. Now. Um, Remember what contango was. Contango was when the futures price was above the actual spot price. So right here, I'll call it contango, C-O-N-T for contango, the futures price relative to the current spot. Okay. Now there's also um, comparisons of the futures of the spot uh, of the futures price relative to the expected spot, and this is called normal normal contango. And the way I like to think about it is you can think of it as a nice C coming down, coming down to the expected spot. And that's contango, normal contango. Now, backward is, backwardation, which is mentioned here, is when the futures price is below the current spot. So you're backward here. Okay, that's backwardization. And normal backwardization is the forward price relative to the expected spot when the forward price is below the expected spot. Okay, so the question is that it's, it's saying at what point, what what point do you start moving below this point? What what what, what um, C are you going to start moving? That's what this problem was about. So. Um, it says, if there are no other carrying costs for all maturities, oh, and there, if there are no other carrying costs, for what values of C can the oil market be in backwardization? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's asking what C will get you so that the futures price is below the current spot price. So the formula for this would be, and this is the formula that... Um, we've been using okay so here we're looking at current spot plus the holding costs as of today and we're growing it forward at rate R minus C the convenience yield because the convenience yield reduces your cost of carrying the, the spot remember this whole side is the cost to carry adjusted for the time period that we're, we're looking at now um, we can simplify things because the text basically assumes in this problem that M is zero. There's no other holding costs. And so the formula is this that we want to deal with. Okay. Now, let's look at, at, at the math here plug, by plugging in the numbers. E to the interest rate, which is 3%, minus C times T, which is see, 
not even telling you what T is. Okay, I'm looking at the problem. I couldn't find a T, so we'll leave it at, at unspecified. And S is $38. Okay. Now, what C do we need? What C do we need so that then um, the futures price here is below the $38 spot price? Well, you can see that, um, and let's, let's just make T equal to 1 for simplicity so we can almost ignore it. What ha what interest what C convenience yield will, will do that? Well, as soon as C gets bigger than three percent, it equals three percent. E to the zero is one, and you got the futures pricing equal to the spot. So as soon as C goes greater than R, you're going to be in in backwardization, backwardation. And so um, let's just pick C equals four percent, and uh, let T equal one year. It's E to the 0 0.03 minus 0 0.04 times 38 and that's going to equal 37.62 so you would be right about here this um, S would be in this case $38 and right here and that's with a C of 0 so you'd have a C of 0 right here and this would be a spot of 38 Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, a C would equal 3% right here. C would equal 3% right here, so the spot equaled the forward price. And as soon as it starts going above 3%, say to 4%, then you're going to be at a futures price that's lower. In this case, 37.62 is where it is. And if you keep increasing C, you're just going to continue to move down on this graph into... Backwardization, backwardation. Okay. Now, let's look at problem nine. Same page. It says the spot price of silver is $7.12.5 an ounce, while the two and five month forward prices are seven dollars and sixteen cents an ounce and seven twenty two an ounce respectively. Part A asks if silver has no convenience yield, what are the implied repo rates? Hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover the two month forward rates um, for answering part A and B. You and you ought to be able to do the five month. I mean, you're just going to be substituting two, um, substituting a five in for a two. So I'm not going to go through all the scenarios. I'll I'll do it for the two month two month forward. So what uh, part A is asking for? Okay, it's saying C is zero. That makes things a little simpler. And it says, what are the implied repo rates? Now, what is an what is a repo rate uh, or an implied repo rate? An implied repo rate is the interest rate R that sets the futures price equal to the cost of carry. Okay, it says, here's the formula, the full-blown formula. I'll start out with that. Which you're used to seeing. Get this focused in on, yep. There's the full-blown theory, uh, uh, formula. Now it's saying, um, normally what we've been doing is we've been given R, C, T, S, and M, and what we've been doing is calculating the forward price under a no arbitrage situation. Here it's asking, it's, it's looking at it from a slightly different angle. It's saying, what if we have the futures price? What if we have C, T, S, and M? What is the interest rate that forces the futures price to equal the cost to carry? And so that would be the implied repo rate. Now, when markets are arbitrage free and there's no oper there's, there's no um, mispricings in the market, R will equal the risk-free rate, like we've been seeing throughout our problems. But if there's a, a um, if there's an arbitrage opportunity, then R will be different than the risk-free rate. And if the interest rate's high, if if the implied repo rate is high. It means that you you can there's a pricing discrepancy and you can you can um, take advantage of that through, through devising a no cost no risk strategy uh, like we've been doing and like we did in chapter three. So let's um, 
let's look at this implied repo rate. We've got to do a little bit of algebra to get there because what the text is asking us to do is really solve for R and look at the formula that solves for R. Now, I'll derive it, but um, which is just rearranging this formula. I don't expect you to know it. and You can just basically put the, um, the, the formula down that I'm going to derive on your formula sheet for, for a test. You know, I'm not going to ask you to derive things. So let's, um, before we go any further, let's just solve for R. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by S plus M. And so F S plus M equals E R minus C T. And, um, uh oh, we're solving for R here that's an exponent. Um, that looks a little crazy, but that's really not that hard. Um, you remember you can undo exponential growth by take, taking the natural logarithm of both sides here. And you get R minus C times T. Oh boy, that makes things a lot easier. Got rid of the exponent. And so here we got the natural logarithm of F over S plus M. Now solve for R. And so we can just distribute this. Okay, keep this the same, and um, you're going to have now. I'll just rearrange it slightly. R equals one over t log of f s plus m um, plus C is what it boils down to. So this is the formula that you could put on your formula sheet. So if I was to ask you on the test, what's the implied repo rate? You'd have this formula and you'd be plugging in these letters, uh, plugging in the numbers for the letters. Now, what, what the heck is this guy right here? What is that log of F over, um, log of F over S plus M? Hmm. That's really not that hard. I'll get my calculator out here. Let's just, uh, that, that's the, the amount of premium that the, that the spot, that the forward price, the futures price is over the spot. So let's just say, just for a second here, um, jumping out of the problem for a second. Let's say F is 100 and S um, is 90. S and M, but S plus M is 90. Um, the log of that is really the, the, the return that's going to take that, that it's going to take to get 90 to grow to 100 over the time period. So in other words, 100 divided by 90, it, it, this is really equal to the log of 1.111. And the log, natural log of 1.11 equals 0 0.1053. So if you were to grow $90, at 10.5% continuously compound it for the whole year, you would get $100 is what that's saying. Okay, So you can see the implied repo rate is adjusted for time. Is this, this interest rate adjusted for time plus the convenience yield that's generated from uh, holding oil in this case. Okay, now in the problem that's at hand, they tell us that C equals zero. So that's a bit of a simplification. That'll help us a bit in our math. And um, also they tell us M is zero. It's, if they don't have any mention of, of holding costs um, or um, an actual convenience yield, you can assume they're zero. So now, Let's um, let's use the information here to solve the problem for the two month forward. Okay, so we're going to plug in R. Oops, R equals um, one over two twelfths. T is always a fraction of time in terms of years, so it's two twelfths times the natural log of 7.16 being the two month futures divided by 7.124 or 25 being the spot price okay 
Um, and there's a zero for the C, so you don't have to make any changes there. So this is equal to 6 times 0 0.0049, which is about a half a percent times 6. That's just under 3%, 2.94%. Um, that is the implied repo rate over the two-month period, 2.94%. Okay? Now, Part B says, suppose silver has an active lease market with a rate, lease rate of L equals 0.5% for all maturities expressed in, a, in annualized continuously compounded terms. Just means we can throw it into that formula for E. Um, let's see, use the formula developed in question three identify the implied repo rate. We don't need that formula. I basically have it right here. The formula I just derived. Okay. The only difference is, um, in this case, it what we're doing is, I'll put it in green. Hopefully green shows up. A lease rate shows up as nothing but L here. L. 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 L and L. And so you're just going to be mathematically now, I didn't explain how what this means yet, but mathematically it's it's an easy adjustment. L is just um, replaces C. But what exactly is a lease rate? What do you mean by leasing oil? Um, there's also lease or in, in this case, no, leasing silver. Sorry, leasing silver. You can lease sil silver and gold and other commodities. Um, there and it's a, a stretch of your imagination if you're not familiar with this, but there is a there is a leasing market for commodities. So first of all, you know what leasing a car is. You you basically pay a lease rate to rent a car for a period of time. And um, imagine just for a moment that the lease rate, um, the the lease the, the cost of the lease is in, as a percentage of the value of the car. So it would be 10% say per year. Um, is, is your lease rate instead of this normal specification, which is in dollars. So that's what we're saying here. We're saying that there are some companies that lease out gold and silver um, and earn a return. So these are companies that own gold in their inventory and they lease it out. Now, why would some company want to lease gold? Well, it, it there are there's issues, there's tax issues that may be at hand, um, and there's also balance sheet effects. If you buy gold, you're putting an asset on your balance sheet. So, uh, see if I can... If you buy gold, here's your balance sheet, here's your assets, here's your liabilities, here's your equity. If you buy gold, um, all else being equal, you're going to be borrowing money to buy that gold, or you could be reducing your cash to buy the gold, but you're going to have a liability um, or a reduction in cash either way. And so some people, if, instead of actually buying the gold and using it and carrying this liability, it, it hurts their financial ratios to show a significant liability. So what they'll do is they'll lease the gold, and the gold won't show up on the balance sheet. It'll just show up as an expense on the income statement because they're renting this this good that they don't actually own, so it doesn't show up on the balance sheet, doesn't show up as, as an asset or a liability, or if they haven't borrowed the money for the gold, in this case, a reduction in cash. So um, by not having it as a liability, it makes your financial ratios better. By not having it a reduction in cash, it, it makes your financial ratios look better. So, And there might be tax implications also because you can um, deduct the, the lease expense for that gold um, it, for tax purposes. So there's tax issues around that. And so there is an active lease market for various commodities, metals. Okay. And it just shows up as a reduction, as I've been showing you here, as a reduction in R. It's just like a convenience yield because you're, this is, remember, this side right here is your cost of carry. And we were saying with, with C, it would be your cost of carry 
uh, is reduced by a convenience yield, but now I'm saying your cost of carry is reduced if you can if you own this this inventory and you can lease it out at rate L, you've just reduced your holding cost, the costs to, to operate, uh, to hold this, this silver or gold. Okay, so now it's asking us um, what, what happens when we have a lease rate of a half a percent? Well, come back over to here um, remember, now you have a lease rate of L. Remember, we used to have C here. I'm crossing that out. It's L, and L is 0 .005, and it's going to be plus 0 .005, plus 0 .005, plus 0 .005, and so R, the implied repo rate, is going to be 0 .0344, 3.44%. Because of that. Um, because of the lease rate that's involved. And so really what we're doing is th what the text is, is doing in this problem so you go back to the full-blown problem it's saying um, what must R be now, if you suddenly have this, we had it zero initially, now it's 0 0.005. And what happened is we anchored on the, the futures price was 716, and the, the spot price, this was zero, the spot price was 7125. These guys, we never changed these throughout the entire problem. We never changed them. And what they're saying is, well, let's add, let's make this L 0 0.005, then what must the new R be? so that these two numbers still match up. Well, you have to increase R by 0 .005 if you're going to subtract 0 .005 from it in order to get these two numbers to stay the same. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay. Now, so what's happened is your implied repo rate is, has increased. In your textbook, by the way, just to give you a little bit of insight, it says, look, int intuitively, the implied repo rate is the interest rate embedded in futures or forward prices. Okay, it is the interest rate that would be observed, that, that would make observed forward and future prices equal to their theoretical prices predicted under no arbitrage situation. So look, if we got forward a spot, what would be the interest rate that would set this to be uh, under a no arbitrage situation? It would have to be 3.44% if we had a half a percent in L for a lease rate.